Welcome back to Exercise Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss branch chain amino acid catabolism. So this is going to be the degradation pathways for the three BCAAs, or branch chain amino acids, which include valine, isoleucine, and leucine. And these are the three BCAAs that are going to be incorporated into proteins, at least they have that capacity. And this is actually more of a, even more of a biochemistry topic, but we're not going to go into the very specific pathways because they get very convoluted. I just want to show you generally what happens to these three amino acids when they're de degraded for energy production and what the corresponding catabolites are, are produced. Okay. Now, first of all, Let's start off with some general things. What are BCAAs? You've probably seen in a drugstore BCAA powder or tablets, and those are actually just three amino acids, valine, isoleucine, and leucine. They're called branched chain amino acids because if you actually were to look at their chemical structures, their R groups, they have aliphatic or hydrocarbon chains that happen to be branched. Okay, like you could go look up those structures right now and you would see that. Now, in terms of amino acid catabolism, so degrading amino acids for energy, the primary tissue that's going to take care of that is really the liver. In fact, the liver is going to be the predominant cell type, at least hepatocytes, they're going to be the predominant cell type that, that's going to degrade amino acids for the purpose of energy production, both non-essential and essential amino acids. And really what the liver is going to do is it's going to play a role in amino acid balance of the body. So if the liver senses that the body is depleted of amino acids, then the liver is not going to be degrading amino acids. It's rather just going to distribute them to the body to uh, compensate. However, if the liver senses that the body has too many amino acids, or at least an excess of them, then the liver senses, well, we don't need it to distribute any more amino acids to the body, so it's just going to catabolize them for energy. And that's really what the liver's uh, major job is there with respect to amino acids. Um, and there is some degradation of amino acids in other tissues, um, mostly the non-essentials, but the, the skeletal muscle plays a huge role, and a unique role, really, in the sense that the skeletal muscle is the sole tissue type or cell type that's going to be degrading these three amino acids, the branch chain amino acids. Okay, The liver doesn't really do this and the, no other cell type does at all. It's really just the skeletal muscle. So let's actually look and see what happens um, when the skeletal muscle takes in these amino acids. What, what's the actual general pathway for their degradation? So these three amino acids obviously would have to be imported into the cell and they're initially going to end up in the cytoplasm of the skeletal muscle cell. Now the first enzyme in this pathway is called branch chain amino acid transaminase. And sometimes you'll hear this referred to as branch chain amino transferase. Basically what this enzyme does is it's just going to take the uh, amino group and convert it into a carbonyl. And you're going to get these corresponding what are called alpha keto acids. For example, valine's corresponding alpha keto acid, it, this enzyme converts it into alpha keto isovalerate. Isoleucine would be converted into alpha keto beta methylvalerate, whereas leucine would be converted into alpha keto isocaproate. And so these are just the corresponding alpha keto acids of the amino acids after they react with this enzyme. And this reaction is going to occur in the cytosol, or the cytoplasm of the skeletal muscle cell. Now remember, skeletal muscles have a mitochondria or they have mitochondria, plural. Um, I've sort of simplified this. This membrane that's shown right here really represents the outer membrane of the mitochondria and its inner membrane. I just didn't want to put two membranes for the sake of space. But ultimately, these alpha keto acids have to be transported uh, through the outer membrane and then through the inner membrane and ultimately into the mitochondrial matrix, which is where the majority of the catabolism is going to occur. Now, once these alpha keto acids have been transported into the mitochondrial matrix across both the outer and inner mitochondrial membranes, they're going to react with this enzyme, which is actually linked to the inner mitochondrial membrane, and it's actually called the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex. In fact, it's mechanistically identical to the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex of the TCA cycle. But what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to convert each of these alpha keto acids right here to their corresponding acyl coas. And exactly how that occurs is this enzyme performs what's called an oxidative decarboxylation. It's going to remove one of the carbons, that is the carboxyl group as CO2, and link the adjacent 
carbonyl to a coenzyme A moiety. And so these metabolites down here, isobutyryl-CoA, alpha-methylbutyryl-CoA, and isovaleryl-CoA, are all reduced by one carbon from their corresponding alpha-keto acid and now are linked to a coenzyme A. And I've shown here just the general uh, catabolites that are ultimately produced from these just because the actual pathways are very convoluted and, and complicated, and there's no use in going into those right here because we're just looking at a general perspective. If you want more detail on these steps, multiple steps, um, there, I have videos on those in the amino acid catabolism playlist that you can go look at. Ultimately, valine's catabolism leads to this metabolite, which is called propanyl-CoA. Ultimately, propionyl-CoA, through a multi-step process, I believe it's about four enzymes, gets converted to succinyl-CoA, which hopefully we know can enter the TCA cycle for energy production. Leucine over here on the other side, leucine, its degradation leads to acetyl-CoA. In fact, in general, leucine is going to actually yield three of these three acetyl-CoAs, but acetyl-CoA can actually directly enter the TCA cycle. In fact, it reacts directly with the enzyme citrate synthase of the TCA cycle. Notice isoleucine, on the other hand, is degraded to both of these products overall. So isoleucine will be degraded to both propanyl S-CoA and acetyl-CoA. But what you should notice is about, about both of these end products is that they both either directly or indirectly enter the TCA cycle, which remember, we can get both NADH and FADH2 out of that, which can then power the electron transport chain for the purpose of oxidative phosphorylation or ATP production by ATP synthase. Okay, so hopefully this gave you some intuition as to how the branch chain amino acids are actually gonna be metabolized for energy. Again, I show you the first two steps just because they're the same for all three of these amino acids and they're the most uh, clinically notable, but ultimately they're either degraded to propanyl S-CoA, acetyl S-CoA, or both, both of which either directly or indirectly enter the TCA cycle. Also, one other important note I want to mention is that valine, isoleucine, and leucine, but particularly leucine, as we'll cover in a future video, while they're in the cytosol, they actually can have another fate other than being metabolized. And that fate is actually to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, because after all, we're talking about skeletal muscle. What we're going to see in another video, and I'll go ahead and preview that video right here, we're going to see that uh, leucine and actually some other amino acids, but in general the BCAAs, are going to stimulate muscle protein synthesis while in the cytosol. And so whenever the uh, skeletal muscle is loaded up on leucine and then to some extent these other two BCAAs, the muscle is going to shift to synthesizing muscle proteins and this is going to be good for after resistance training um, for the purpose of hypertrophy and myofibrillogenesis for uh, just increased strength overall. Now we will cover the functions of muscle protein synthesis and how they relate to these three amino acids in a future video. But for now, hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the metabolism of the three branch chain amino acids. And we see how their end products are ultimately funneled into the TCA cycle for the purpose of energy production. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we're actually going to discuss the metabolism and other functions of another non-proteinogenic amino acid called norvaline. This is an amino acid that you may see as a supplement in a drugstore. So we'll talk about that in the next video, and then we're going to get into some more aspects of muscle protein synthesis. Thank you for watching this video. Please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.